Are you looking to learn how to make a needle felted octopus? If so, then you're on the right video because today I'm going to share with you everything you need to know to make one and more. and welcome to today's video, a needle felting octopus tutorial. My name is Iceland and I'll be your fiber artist host and on this channel, Snowflake Forest Felting, I share needle felting videos, tutorials, and product reviews. So if you're new and this interests you, please consider subscribing. And if you want to know more about anything you see here on this channel, be sure and check the links down in the description below this video or leave a comment. I'd love to connect with you there. And as always, if you think these videos may help someone, please share them where you can. Also, I want to give a huge thank you to those of you who have subscribed since my last video. There's been a couple hundred of you. Your support means so much to me. Thank you. Now, I'm going to show you everything you need to make to make this needle felted octopus. You're going to need a surface protector. I love these foam ones. I like to use two. One for when I'm working with the bone colored wool and another for when I'm working with the colored wool. You're going to need your needle felting needles of your choice. I use Clover USA's heavyweight needles for almost every project, a pair of scissors to trim it up when you're done, and to cut your thread for when you're sewing your eyes on. I have these two tiny seed beads I'm going to be using, and some thread to do that, and a needle to sew those on. Black is going to work best because black is the color we'll be using in the eye area. A tape measure, a fabric one works well, so that way you know the size of your project. So for this octopus, I'm gonna mesh these two colors for the eyelids. And then these three colors for the tentacles, this aqua, sky blue, and lavender purple. And then on his body and more so his head, I'm going to be making a mesh of all these colors that fade into these darker blues. And then lastly, some of this green will be using to make the suction cups on the bottom of the tentacles. And remember, I'm going to have all this linked down in the description below for you. You can go and check out more there. Also, I wanted to talk a little bit about this needle felted octopus. I have made a handful of these. If you've been around on this channel, you probably have seen the time lapse I have of making one very similar to this. His legs were a little bit shorter, came out from underneath him more than hanging down in front of him. I think that makes it look more like a baby octopus compared to an adult octopus with the longer little tentacles. And so if you want to go and check out the other octopus tutorial video, I'll have it linked in the iCard above and description below. This octopus is one of the one creations that I have probably made the most of, besides the jellyfish that you see back here on the wall. So there's been a handful of versions of him. This octopus has just been such a fun creation to make, from selling it on Etsy, to gifting it to friends, and to making these videos for you. I personally think this version is great if you're just going to be hanging it. Now, let's get to felting. To begin, you're gonna to wanna to take out your needle felting needle and then take some of your core wool. It's not going to take very much. So I make most of my projects around four inches in size. I'm going to ball it and pinch it here because we're going to continue to add on to this and give him a true octopus shaped head where that kind of hangs over and back in a large bubbly way kind of alien shaped as well, I guess. I'm gonna wrap some more wool around the back here and onto the front. Secure it together, just taking that needle, piercing it straight in and out of the wool, just like so. Super simple process. Just make sure you're not bending your needle or doing anything too weird when going into it because they are very delicate and can break off into your project or even into your foam surface. I kind of want to arch it and shape it a little bit like a jelly bean or a bean. Just going to add a layer here to smooth everything out and over. You can mold it and shape it with your fingers some. And now you're just going to want to continue felting this from all angles until it is completely firm and solid because then once we start to add the color on it, if you haven't felted it enough, it's just going to collapse into itself. So be super patient at this point with your project. Continue shaping it as you go and making sure to give this larger back area more of a bulb roundness. 
he'll be sitting just about like that. Really quick, I'll show you here because we're felting. It's around three inches in size. Once it's felted nice and good, it's probably going to be more around two and a half inches. see it is condensing down some and I'm just continuing to shape it so it's more narrow in the front keeping this back end larger just gentle pressure with the needle I can feel that this end is getting firmer than this end so I'm gonna use a little bit more of this wool to help make this part bigger back here put it on just like that and then felt all over because if I felt in one area too much it's gonna make the wool bunch and I want to keep these fibers all spread out and smooth. Alright, now that you have the head of your octopus and a little bit of the body there all felted, you can go ahead and put that aside and it's time to mesh some wool colors. So the body is going to be a mix of colors. So I'm going to start with these colors. It's obviously not going to take very much. Start here with a small amount of each. And then I do have a video that is more specific on meshing wool colors. If you want to go and check that out, I will be sure and link it for you down in the description. This is a fairly simple process though. And for the octopus, we're going to have them pretty spotted. So we're not going to have to mesh these as much as you would maybe for another item you might be working on and really want the colors blended. And so I'm just pulling them apart as you can see. And get these darker pieces more pulled apart. It does not take very much. And now I'm separating the darker parts a little more from the lighter parts. You can see the two differences there. And now I'm going to use a different needle here. It's not really a different needle. It's the same needle. It's just one I made for myself with a little better top for holding on to it. So I'm going to take this darker wool here and I'm going to wrap it maybe a little bit more meshing now. This is going to go around the back of the head. I'm going to start attaching it on all around. Mesh this a little bit and use this to cover the rest of it. Attach it on as well. I'm also going to use a different foam surface here so I'm not picking up those white colors and getting them meshed in with this color. Just kind of moving some colors around here a little bit it look more even to my eyes and then this is another reason why you really want to get that first part of your octopus felted well if there's any fibers that don't belong just pull them out don't felt them in so having it shaped and nice and firm you're not going to lose your shape as you're adding on this color now it's going to mold right around that have any spots where you're starting to see aren't completely covered just grab a little bit of that wool make sure you cover it completely and thoroughly you can see as you continue to felt it's smoothing out really nice and keeping that shape all right so this is pretty well smoothed out you can see it a little closer super simple shape to start with and set that aside and now it's time to work on the tentacles which are going to be a mix of these three colors and there's eight of those this looks like a pretty fair amount all right same thing you're just going to pull this wool apart Now you want to 
take these and divide them into eight tentacles. So you'll want your wool to be as even as possible and the colors to be somewhat even too. A little bit of each color in each one. Now depending on how baby you want your octopus to look or how adult you want it to look, that's going to depend on how long the tentacles are. Six. Just laying it out here, trying to make the wool amounts look as even as possible for each one. And again, some legs can be a little longer and some a little shorter, so this doesn't have to be super accurate. And then take each leg, ball the wool a little bit in between your hands, and then roll it like this. It's gonna help hold the pieces together, give them some shape. There's eight. <laughs> now you can pull this back. You'll continue felting on this some more if it needs any smoothing out. Sometimes even just kind of going over it with your fingers or a little roll even itself will help smooth those fibers some. You can go ahead and set that aside though for now because you're gonna get your tentacles felted as much as possible before we attach them. One thing that I like to do is hold it into the light and then I can see like any little spots that are bunched out and still need smoothing out. So now you're going to want to keep one end unfelted. So you're going to pinch some of that wool, hold on to that, and then you're going to felt this, pick it up, you can re-roll it if it's kind of coming apart, and then you're going to want the one end felted into a tip, because that'll be the tip of the tentacle. And this part that's loose is what you're going to use to attach it. You can give your tentacle as much of a curve as you'd like, and that will continue to just shape as you're felting it and moving it. Just keep picking it up and felting. Making all eight of these is going to feel very time consuming, so just be patient. And you don't want each one to look all the same because, you know, octopus tentacles are usually going a bunch of different directions and some are more curved up than others. Just have fun making each one. You'll notice in the time-lapse video of the first octopus that I've posted on this channel, his little legs are super short and they're all kind of going up and out. And if you look on like, my Instagram, you can see some of them have longer legs, some are underneath them, some are spread out more in front of them. And so each time they can kind of tend to come out a little different depending on what style you're wanting to do. The key here is getting these felted really well. You don't have to go super deep into the project because it'll push the wool all the way through. So as you start to get it finished, just short little pierces into it. And we'll be attaching them on like that. So now just continue this process until you have all eight of them felted. pieces felted. Go ahead and spend some time smoothing all of them out. If there's any that still need a little more felting. All right, so as you're finishing up smoothing out everything and felting everything really well, you can roll the legs between your hands like this and it will help smooth that out and tuck the last of those fibers in. And now you want to go and take each leg and trim any extra fibers that are on it. This can get a little messy, so if you want to do this over a trash can or outside in the wind, 
little birdies can pick up the fibers for their nests. There's great lighting out there and you don't have it all over in your workspace. All right, and that is pretty good for now because you'll trim on it when you're finished some. Now you want to lay out your tentacles to decide how you're going to attach them. I like to put the larger ones towards the back and the smaller ones towards the front. And now for attaching them, you're going to take each one of the ends and spread the wool all out. Just nice and gentle like that. just going to take and attach it right on in to the small part so then pierce it on maybe a little wiggly there Rub all around and then just continue this for each of the eight legs Once you have them all attached, you can take a little bit of the extra wool that you meshed and then attach it right down here in the front to just smooth it out. Alright, and then you can give that area a little trim over. And now it's time to make all the little suction parts on tentacles take your green and it's not going to take very much and you're going to roll them between your fingers depending on how long the legs are on your octopus there's probably going to be anywhere from 10 to 20 or even more and these can be varied in size and you don't have to spend too much time rolling them just like this Have what you think is going to be enough made it's good to go if you have to make a few more don't worry about it so you can go ahead and start attaching these you want to pick the bigger ones to start up at the top and then you're just going to felt these in by going straight down into the center and you don't have to go super deep because you don't want this wool to push through to the other side it's okay if it does we'll trim it or you can even take it and pierce it back down in Usually I just trim it off though. And then just felt it enough to attach it. And if you're felting directly in the center, it's gonna give it that suctiony cup type look. So you don't wanna felt around the edges of it. And then just continue doing this do down each tentacle. And then when you get down to the very end, it only needs one. So at some point you'll break off from the two whether it's like two or three at the end. I'm gonna go back to that two. Now that you have them all attached, you can go ahead and go flip it over, take your scissors, and trim all that extra fiber that came through off. Then once you have everything all trimmed up, it's time to work on the eyes. And then for the lids, it's just going to be a mesh of these two colors. So you're just going to pull the wool back and forth like so until it's really blended. And you'll want to blend this more than you blended the wool for those parts. Then set that aside and take a little bit of your black, pull it together. You want these to be as even as possible. And then just on the front of your octopus, go ahead and felt that on. And put the other one on. And then you're gonna take this wool and use it to cover over the eyes halfway to make a lid. Work it towards a point on each side. It's going to work easier if you work on them at the same time. They will be more even. All 
All right, you're gonna wanna take some time on the eyes, making sure they're nice and even. There we go, that's looking a little more even. Now you can take your needle thread and your beads. And just thread right through the eye. Add the bead on. And there you go. Tie it in a couple knots gently. And then trim the thread. And then you can just felt the extra thread down on in. Hold the bead in place. And you can wrap just a little bit of more. Roll it the black wool onto the eye help secure that bead and thread in place just like that and do the next one and then just felt them so they both look as even as possible now you want to give your octopus a final look any spots that still need smoothed out or felted or evened. And then you'll want to go around and trim any fibers that still need trimmed. Sometimes if you have any spots that need kind of pulled back up, if you just felt at an angle like so very gently, it'll help to smooth that out. And then your needle felted octopus is done. Let me show you here a little closer. All right, that's it. That's everything you need to know to make this needle felted octopus and be a fiber artist too. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more. Share these videos where you can. And if there's something you'd like to see me felt next, drop it down in the comments below. I love making the themes you guys want to see created. Thank you so much for watching today. I'll see you in the next one. Happy felting! What do you need? You make it so shanty, setty, no I not. No I didn't. Yeah you did. No it just gets nine at time on its own. No you just make it do it. I don't control the daytime and nighttime. Yeah you do. I do? Yeah. <laughs> Love you.